I will try to do a bit of an introduction to Eldos. Meanwhile, this is is rolling in the background, so I hope everything works here. Um, so my name is Matthias Ekström. Uh, I work as CMO for Eldos Group. Uh, I've been with Eldos now for uh, I think it's close to 13 years. Um, so I have had the chance to follow the business model the change from being a pure catalog business to a catalog business selling online to then transforming into no longer being a catalog model at all, but really a pure e-com digital player within fashion and home uh, in the Nordics. And I think that if we look back a couple of years, 2014 may seem like a couple of years back now, but it's in real life in a business model as such, it's, it's not that far back. And 2014 was a very critical year for us in, uh, in Elos. That was the last year that we sent a catalog, a big book to our, our consumers. And that was a big thing for us to, to make that sort of change, uh, that transformation as such. Just to explain a little bit how, how that business model worked, it was actually, and it is a quite simple business model as such, having a, a catalog business. Just try to have as many customers in your customer file as possible, and then send as many catalogs as possible to those customers and try to make that in a profitable way. But for us, the catalog was more than just a media. It was really the business model as such that we, I mean, all of our internal processes, everything was built around the, the catalog. So just to exemplify that a bit, um, every year start off with a very, very, very crucial decision to take. Immense, the most critical, critical thing that we had to decide upon, the number of pages in the catalog. Was it 620 this year, 580, 560? I mean, a very, very critical, critical de decision. And why? Since that for every single page, there were 2.5 products. A very stable ratio to keep, because that was the sort of way to range plan how we went to, well, planned our assortment for, for that specific season. So the number of pages multiplied by 2.5, there's the range. So how to know what products to buy the most of? Well, obviously the ones at the beginning of the catalog with large images. And content? Well, just make a catalog, put that online and sell the stuff, basically. This, this sort of and way of working has a couple of issues to it, uh, obviously. It consumes a lot of your media mix, more than 80%, basically, a couple of years back. So it didn't really, it, it wasn't really that much work with another medias. It's also extremely slow. It takes a, lo a very long time to produce a catalog. You have to, due to that, buy your assortment way, way, way in advance. Meaning that you stock up for six months stuff that you're not really, really certain that people will want. So you end up having a lot of products in your warehouse and when fashion and home interior, that's sort of an issue. So if you do not sell everything that you have, you have to move over to discounts, promotions, red prices. And that became the business model of Ellos that we really needed to change. But the decision was more than just changing the media mix. Due to all of these processes, I mean, it was a business model change that we needed to make. But we took that, that plunge, so to speak, in 2014 we decided that this was the last catalog that we sent. And from that, we reworked, and we had to rework everything. I mean, the brand, the communication, everything, th those platforms towards our customers, collection tempo, uh, media mix, obviously. We changed the IT platform completely to, to be able to do what we wanted to do in terms of e-com, marketing, and so forth. Obviously, also a lot of, of work with culture, competences in-house, changing the core competence, one of them being how to produce a catalog to no longer needing that to instead drive e-com and digital marketing as efficiently as possible. This transformation was, was uh, at its most, I would say, critical stage between 2014 and 2017, where we had a quite large proportion of consumers who weren't really with us on that journey. I mean, they still needed the catalog to continue shopping with us. So we embarked on that journey and had a couple of years where we saw underlying following those KPIs that the online business model was thriving as such, but the total business was affected by this change. But after 2017, I mean, that sort of 
legacy model was behind us and we could just focus on on delivering growth with, with that new business model and has basically ever since been driving profitable growth uh, from this. But that's one sort of KPI to follow is the business model, I mean, thriving or not. But some other KPIs to take a look at is, is uh, some, I mean, some that are nice, nice to, to talk about, like improved marketing efficiency, uh, increasing the number of new customers, where we are now recruiting more than half a million new customers every year, quite stable and, and just increasing year by year. But there's one single KPI that stands, stands out a bit, and that's 5,000 tons of catalogs sent per year. I mean, I can't even imagine how many catalogs that would be if you would place them all in, in the room. If my math is not completely incorrect, it's like 5 million kilograms of catalogs. I mean, it's, it's, it's a bunch that is just completely taken away from, from the business itself. Um, so this is sort of the change that we did uh, between those couple of years and from there we had like a stepping stone to completely change in, in I mean, how we drive specifically the brand, communication, e-com and performance marketing, which I'm primarily here to share, share today. Um, so if we move on. Uh, Tying up a bit to, to what uh, Yuan was presenting, uh, we have worked quite a bit with, with how we drive our performance marketing and, and being able to take that step into, I mean, letting budgets go in, in the way we work. But this is obviously something that you can't do for, for all medias. So we, we tried to set up a structure how, how to work with that. And just to go through a, uh, uh, some point just before that, I mean, in Elos, we have a couple of, of core pillars, strategic pillars for marketing that we always try to follow. Some I, I'm sure that we share with quite many of you to always have a digital first and mobile first media mix, obviously. Always try to have as much relevance in content for each media that which we produce so that we optimize the content for each, each media that we are in and, and select. Optimizing as much as possible through marketing automation. I'm sure that everyone is working on that as well. But there's one piece that we have specifically seen as a big growth driver during, during I would say, the last year or so, and that's a purpose-built media budgeting. So these core pillars have been defined or taken into a media mix framework that is obviously something that we haven't uh, created for ourselves. I mean, um, see, think, do, and care. Is, is quite commonly used, but we have really tried to, to create our version of that into a strategic media mix framework and try to create a structured way of how to budget and drive media mix selections uh, and performance based on that. So it's quite easy. Uh, I mean, C is the channels that are supposed to create awareness and interest, and there we group the different medias that can potentially do that including the offline ones, even though we don't use that anymore. Think uh, is for us the, the medias that are intended to, to uh, drive efficient upper funnel traffic and sales, whereas do are the ones that by definition more or less has been touched by any of the other medias on beforehand, basically. So, so I mean, they're more like a lower funnel traffic and sales. This is not just a slide for us and how we work. This is how we have defined our tracking setup. So what you look at here is the actual tra tracking setup, more or less, that we have in, in Ellos right now. And why is that important? It is because these KPIs to the far right are the ones that we attribute and follow performance towards. So the top ones, the ones in C, we do not care about cost of sales whatsoever. It's not relevant, it's not important at all. It's really to drive as many views and engagement as possible to the, I mean, as, as small cost as possible. Whereas think and do is more to drive performance. And that is where we have developed our cost of sales free spend model uh, that I'm intending to, to explain a bit uh, uh, here. Uh, where we basically created a simulation model based on the data that we had in BI. So product profit per country, per category, as deep as we, as we could take it, and try to model what is the optimal ratio between intended profit 
and wish profit basically per product category and what marketing spend to, could we spend to reach that based on the PL structure of each, each category basically. That, that itself wasn't really a difficult exercise to do. The secret sauce, so to speak, is more to create an attribution conversion from that into the different specific medias, such as Google or Facebook, uh, where we tried actually to skip the normal attribution framework that we normally have as marketeers in web analytics, but more find that ratio between the BI data that we have, the true data, the sales data, the profit data, and the channel mix. And through this attribution conversion, be able to give each market here in each individual channels a, a cost of sale, basically, that is based on product profit, so that they could spend as much as they wanted as long as they keep that ratio. So all budgets, daily budgets, monthly budgets were just taken away from one day to the next. At the beginning, it was a bit scary. It was a leap of faith to do. Uh, we have had to, to make a couple of adjustments over time, but basically the results we're seeing from that is, is quite fantastic. So to exemplify how that could look on a typical category, the uplifts out here in the actual channel attributions is obviously quite good. That's what you normally see when you spend more in a channel, you get better results basically. The difficulty will usually lies in uh, attributing that back into your normal attribution framework that you have in Google Analytics or could be Adobe Analytics or whatever it may be. But here we saw like a decreasing effect, obviously, from what we see out in the channels to the web analytics to the BI. But this is again where the secret sauce is to be able to find out those econometrical figures to see where could we actually spend more or less and how does this affect our sales. Uh, and this is, has been a, a huge growth driver for us during this year that we are particularly proud about. What's next on that is to move from optimizing product profit into customer profit. This is something that we do for some other channels right now that we haven't really taken into search uh, as of yet. Where one of the good things about the legacy model that we had was that everything in terms of data structures, uh, data accessibility and so forth from the legacy model, model that we had was actually fantastic. I mean, that was so core in that business model. So we could just move into more advanced analytics, predictive models and so forth, if we could just hook up the data into different medias, which we have done over the course of, I would say, two years or so. Uh, and through some quite decent in-house capabilities in that, we have been able to be build like an independent predictive recommendation engine basically that today serves up personalization for our emails. We're hooking that up to our website right now for personalization as well. It's hooked up to uh, Facebook for segmentation. And right now we're hooking that up to Google as well for search to be able to, during this year, hopefully based on predictive customer lifetime profit optimize the spending levels per individual in Google as well. So that will be a quite cool project that we hope to land quite soon at least. And I think that with that, I've sort of shared the, the gist of, of what we're doing uh, and how we have implemented the, the, uh, uh, the non-budget approach based on profit basically. So thank you very much. <laughs>